Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another work in progress video here on the G40. Now, I wasn't really expecting to do much more work than on this than what we did in the first video. Basically, I was expecting to pretty much just go into painting soon after, but there's a couple of other things that I wanted to do and I wanted to share with you guys here in this video. So there's a couple of things to point out here. The seam lines, once removed on the arms, you can see are pretty much invisible. So just a note, because a couple of people did ask about this, about uh, it, can you remove seam lines and not paint the kit? Now, I've noticed usually it's only really possible for the most part just on white plastic because then it's very much invisible. But you can see even here on the sides of the body, those red parts after the seam line is removed, there's not really much there. You can see there's a little bit kind of some marking there from uh, where the gate marks were originally. And I think if you went ahead and sanded this more, I just sanded this with like around like 800 grit sandpaper. If you went to like 1214 grit sandpaper and got that really back to being super smooth, the seam line would pretty much be un invisible. On that so you could probably get away with doing uh, some seam line removal on this and then not painting the kit if you were so inclined now as speaking of seam line removal i did also go ahead and uh glue the seam line down here on the lower legs just because i was back and forth and you know in the last video i mentioned that uh, i would didn't want to remove the seam line here on the thigh and on the lower leg but i decided i did want to remove this one here on the lower leg so i've got that glued at the moment it's not sanded down yet so i need to sand that and then one other quick thing here on the knee, that yellow part there is like three vents down here at the bottom and then one vent there at the top, but I went ahead and just sanded that down just to make that flat. So later on when it's painted, I think that little yellow bit at the top, I will paint that in like just like dark gray or something like just to match the inner frame. I didn't want another vent, of course, sort of like a little vernier detail there at the top of the knee as well. It's just a little bit much for me. I prefer it just down here below the knee, I think looks better. So we got the three little vents there and then that will be a separate just little gray detail piece there at the top. Now, the other thing that I did want to show you guys, just a kind of little modification that I made, a very simple thing, and not really particularly necessary for any reason, but will I think maybe just make my life a little bit easier. If you're wanting to paint the top and bottom half of this lower leg different colors, then you can make a very simple modification to be able to just remove this part like that. Now on this part here, there was a little tab sticking out. Just cut that tab off and then you can easily just remove this part as you'd like. Now, unfortunately, I think that will mean that that will possibly come out unintentionally when you don't want it to come apart, but I think once the knee is on there, it kind of blocks that from coming out, so it can't really come out of there. The cool thing about that too is then you can also rotate this much farther off to the side than you could before. Before it was like just a little wiggle side to side, now it can rotate much farther, much more than I think you would ever want it to or need it to. Uh, but that knee does seem to hold it on there pretty well, so it's not gonna like just fall off randomly. You could just, of course, glue it if you were too worried about that. But that was just to help with this disassembly for painting. I can have this um, part as just a separate piece that I can paint separately and then like I said I need to just finish sanding down the seam line on that. Uh, and then back around here on the backpack as well I've added this little detail there because on the top of the backpack I think I mentioned this in the review uh, or maybe during the live build at some point I mentioned about this there was like a little bit of detail here on the top of the backpack like these uh, four little like notch kind of raised details but then there was a mold line running right through the center of those and I tried just getting rid of the mold line while preserving the details there at first but it was just kind of a really a pain in the ass and so I said all right just getting rid of that detail and so just sanded that all completely down and then I wanted to uh, go back and add something there so I just added this little detail part there the little hook detail part uh, bar there on the top of the backpack just to add something else in there and I'm not totally against going in and adding some more a couple more detail parts somewhere else on this kit though I feel like that's probably about it but I could change my mind sometime between now and once we get to the actual painting but the other thing that I wanted to focus on for now is the skirt armor because a lot of you guys said after the first work in progress video that you wanted to see about removing or uh, adjusting the skirt armor, modifying the skirt armor so that it's less diapery and so you have actual movable front skirts. So I didn't really care too much about that personally so I wasn't going to bother with it. But a lot of you guys wanted to see that so why don't we take a look at how to do that. I don't know exactly offhand at the moment how I'm planning on doing that but we'll find out here in a moment. The first thing we need to do is take this apart enough so that we know what we're dealing with. Now I want this side skirt to also be movable and after taking a look at this for a few minutes I think it mostly should be possible uh, with this just a cut off piece of runner. It's just a plastic tube there basically and let's see here we need 
uh, some one millimeter A line. So this in particular here from Wave, this product is an aluminum, but you could also use brass rod, doesn't really matter. I think this should be enough that we need. And then some glue, of course, and drill. So what we're gonna basically do is uh, use this plastic as a base, drill holes in it, and then use these pins to pin the skirt parts so that they're actually able to move. And that should work pretty easily, I suppose, but we'll find out. So let's just focus on the front skirt first. And the first thing we need to do is cut them apart. We need to separate them, of course. So let's pull out a saw. Now for this one, I'm once again gonna be using this uh, little micro saw here from Kotobukiya. And we already have the sort of panel line there for that. So I just need to slip the saw in the panel line there and just gently saw this apart. All right, so now those are successfully separated and sanded down. I want to just go ahead and remove these color pieces for now because we just don't really need them where they are. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is take this part here and I'm gonna cut off two little sections of this, which will basically serve as the anchors for our rod to go between the skirts. Now I'm going to join the two skirts together through the center essentially. And since we're using a one millimeter uh, rod, we're gonna use a one millimeter drill here and just drill into the center of that. It probably would have been easier to drill into the center uh, through this and then cut the piece off of there. But I've always got more if I just mess this up or something and I wanna go back and cut off a new piece. That's why it's easy just using parts of runner because you've always got plenty of that lying around. And once you have the two anchor pieces there, the holes drilled in those, what I'm going to do is just take a flat file and just file these on one side just to make one side a little bit flat. Again, probably a good thing would have been to just do this before cutting it off because now I'm working with this little tiny piece and it's a little bit hard to hold. But I just want to make it so that one side is a little bit flat. There we go. And then that flat side is going to be what we're going to glue up onto the inside of the skirt armor. Now I'm going to glue that up onto the underside of this part here, which is this, this like uh, the front of the skirt. So this is the top of the front skirt and it's going to be glued up underneath the top of the front skirt there. So that's where I want to glue this. So I just needed a flat surface to just give it a little bit more to, uh, to adhere to the glue there. That looks pretty good, just up in there like that. Now, of course, we need to just give that some time to dry. I'll go ahead and file and glue in the other side and then we'll work on the center part. So as for this part, based on where the rod is gonna line up once the skirts are going there between there, I can tell that I need to drill a hole basically right about there, right through the center of here, and then the rod should go straight through uh, between the two halves of the front skirts, just through the center of this part right there. Just something like that. So I want to give the glue a little bit more time to dry on these before we test that out. So we'll put that to the side for now and take a look at the side skirts then. So we want to make the side skirts able to move also. And for these, we're basically gonna do the same thing using an anchor and rod basically for that. But I need to remove these little bits here on the side, these parts which plug into the front and back skirts because we don't want it to plug into the front and back skirts. We want it to move freely. So I can just go ahead and clip those, remove those also. I can clip and remove this part which will plug it there onto the center of the waist because it's not gonna be plugged onto the center of the waist. So go ahead and just clip that off of there as well. And over here around on the back skirt, I went ahead and just cut out this little part. There's a little part where the part of the side skirt plugs into there, just gonna cut that away because what we're gonna basically gonna have to do in this case is put an anchor on the back skirt here and on the side skirt. So we'll have to cut off a little piece of this. I went ahead and filed the top of this so we've already got the top part of that flat. We'll have to put a little bit here on this part right there and then a little bit under here on the side skirt. Then we'll be able to stick a bit of rod in between them and then they should just plug onto each other like that. And so this side skirt will hinge actually off of the back skirt here like that. So that's how in theory this should work. Now we have to deal with some very small little parts here. So you're definitely gonna have to be careful. All right, fellas, our little bits are prepared here. So just gonna go ahead and glue these all in place. This one up in here. And then on the side skirts as well. That one up in there like that. And we can check to see, it's like those are gonna be lining up basically like that once we have the rod in between them. And so I need to check, make sure that the lineup is good on them. Looks like it's gonna be just about right, so it should work. 
Okay, so I gave those parts some time to sit overnight and the glue should be cured enough. I can feel confident in that now and we can just cut some pieces of our brat, or not brass, aluminum rod and we can see how well it's gonna work here. And now again, this is not going to be, I mean, it's gonna be relatively delicate. So it's not gonna be something I'm gonna wanna play with a whole bunch, uh, but the point is that it's just gonna give us a little bit of articulation where we didn't have articulation before. So as long as it does that successfully, then I'll count this as a success. Okay, and I'm seeing that I set this in a little bit closer so it's not wanting to go move out because these parts here in the center are kind of crashing into each other a little bit. So I can fix that pretty easily by just uh, taking this part here on the side where the side skirts originally did plug into there and just uh, shaving that down a little bit. So I'll just use my knife to just kind of slice away about a millimeter of that should be enough. All right, we'll have to do the same to the other side, I assume, or we'll see just in case. But for now, anyway, this should work just fine. So you can see it's a little bit delicate, but that at least will move up and down now, so that's cool. And once we've got some paint on there, everything, of course, will tighten up a little bit when you got a layer of paint on it. But for the time being, that works. And we can do the same here for the front skirt, into one side, through the center there, and into the other side. Obviously, this is way more than I need, so I can go ahead and cut a little bit off of that. All right, there we go. So now those are joined together, so they'll move, the, I can move them separately because they're neither of them are like, glued, but now they can move uh, together or separately, and that works really well. These are much tighter than the side skirt. The side skirt ones are gonna be a little bit iffy, but at least for the time being, that is now fully articulated, so that's cool. And all right, I'd say that's a pretty good success. Now I have these lifted up just for the effect at the moment, just so you guys can see that. But now that we have the articulation there in the skirt armor, now when we bring the leg up to the front, we don't have to actually bend it there at the thigh, at least to get it up this far. Any farther than that's gonna be still a little bit iffy. And the problem now that I'm running into, aside from this back skirt part completely falling off, is that they're clashing here a little bit in the corner where the front corner of the front skirts is hitting into the side skirts that's going to be crashing into each other a little bit and i'd have to modify this kind of a lot more than i really care to i've modified it enough so that at least has some articulation here that's kind of enough for me i don't really care too much about uh, doing that any really too much more than this so really for now that's kind of a wrap on any modifications and preparation that we need to do for painting I'm ready to give him a bath so it's all clean and ready for paint and so let's go over uh, what paints I'm gonna use for this guy all right so first off I should say that I'm gonna be basing the color scheme off of the master grade 2.0 kit and so the there's different versions of it in like different games or something the color scheme changes slightly but I'm gonna go for pretty much as close as I can uh, to the Masquerade 2.0. So I'm using all Gaia Notes paints here once again for this one. For the main armor color, I'm gonna be using number 72 here, neutral gray two. And then for the secondary armor color for like the parts of the front skirt and around the neck, I'm gonna be using the number 73, neutral gray three. It's just one tone darker there of this. So, and so Gaia Notes makes this range of neutral gray one through five, and they're really good if you guys want to have just different tones of gray, but you don't want uh, and you want neutral tones obviously by the name would imply it's so really good if you want to do like a two-tone colors like this where I just need like a, a secondary tone for just a couple of parts that need to be just a little bit darker and so it works for that really well and there's a third gray for basically just on the feet which is kind of like a dark slightly bluish gray so I'm gonna be using number 63 here blue gray uh, so it's just a little bit darker a little bit blue in tone and then for the light kind of purplish parts I'm going to be using this one here from the Dugram paint series. This is just a lavender which is a little bit lighter than the regular guy notes lavender and so I wanted it uh, for this one I think the little bit lighter color will work well for that and for the uh, yellow parts going to be using a virtual lawn paint here this is uh, mild orange for this so it's a slightly orangish and a little bit pale in the yellow color it's not super bright but I am going to be uh, making sure that we maintain as much of that whiteness uh, brightness as possible by priming the yellow parts with the uh, white primer everything else is just going to get a regular gray primer and then finally uh, neutral gray 5 here I'm going to be using 
for the backpack and the rifle and like the hand parts, any joint parts like that, uh, which are like kind of like part of the inner frame of like Master Grade, for example, or again, just the rifle. It's gonna be in this darker gray, neutral gray five. Now, I don't think this is gonna be too dark, although it might end up being a little bit too dark, in which case I'll, I'll try a little bit lighter gray. But even on the Master Grade there, you can see it's a pretty dark comparison to everything else on the rest of the kit for those parts. So that's it for the colors. I'm gonna go get this guy all ready and we'll get some primer sprayed on him and get to painting and we'll cover that all in the next episode, which will be the third and final work in progress on this before we get to the finished product. So thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye guys.